And the nature of spiritual beings is to love and be loved. Actually, loving is more important than being loved. We all want to appreciate someone, to love someone who's perfect. The other day, a lady asked me, how can we love God? It just seems like it's so advanced, it's so far away. And she was standing there with her husband, and I said, well, do you love your husband? And she looked at him with great affection and said, yes, of course I love my husband. So I said, well, just take that same love and affection and turn it towards God. Simple, huh? And it's a fact. Loving God is simple and natural. It's actually our eternal constitutional nature to love God. Why? Because we're spirit souls. We are spirit souls, not this body. That's why all efforts to attain perfect love in a perfect situation or a perfect body in this material world can never work. Huh? If we were this body, then there would be no urge for a transcendent experience of perfection in love. We would simply be interested in sex life and other kinds of sense gratification, and that would be it. There would be no exalted uh, feeling of perfection in our love. It wouldn't have that spiritual edge. It wouldn't have a luminous, transcendent attribute. So because we are spiritual beings, we are searching for spiritual perfection both in ourselves and in others. We can't avoid it. It's just like because we have a stomach, we need to eat. Huh? So because we're spiritual beings, we need to love and be loved. And we cannot erase that, but we can point it in the right direction. This hunger for love and affection can never be satisfied by ordinary human beings because they're just limited. And our affection and our love is unlimited because it's ultimately spiritual. So we cannot satisfy an unlimited spiritual appetite with uh, material being. It just uh, can't be done. Because material beings are always limited and imperfect. And our spiritual love craving is for unlimited and perfect love. Only God can supply that kind of love. Only God has the perfections that we are looking for in a perfect beloved. So the real beloved is God. Now, how do we love God? As I said, it begins from controlling the tongue. Controlling the tongue means that we don't take impure things into our body, that cause karmic bondage to this material world. Instead, we use the tongue for glorifying God and for calling his name. By calling his name, we get his attention. And as my guru said, you should not strive to see God. Rather, you should strive to get his attention so that he wants to see you. So we are here uh, in the material world because we desired at one point to go away from God. So God satisfied that desire. Now here we are. What? We're not happy? Oh, imagine that. Well, of course, he knew that would happen. And so he comes with us. However, in this material world, we can't see him. That's the nature of this world. Again, because we desired it. But if we call him, if we call his name, he will reveal himself to us. And this is something that's very difficult to explain to someone who hasn't experienced it. Uh, God is there in our hearts. Uh, he is next to us. He is closer than well, we can even imagine. So there's no problem with God revealing himself if he so desires. Uh, the trick is to get him to trust us again 
So we have to show our dedication. That's what worship is all about. That's what prayer is all about. And the best kind of prayer is chanting this holy name. I know people who pray, God, give me this, give me that, give me a Mercedes, give me a mansion. Uh, that's not prayer. Prayer is for things that can only come from God. Like spiritual love, wisdom, perfections of different kinds. And I don't mean material perfections, I mean spiritual perfections. Like loving kindness, charity, compassion, spiritual wisdom and knowledge, detachment from material sense gratification, all these perfections that are indicators of real spiritual life and sincere spiritual seeking. They can only come from God. God, in the process of revealing himself, removes the cravings for material things from our heart. You see, that's why morality can never produce a perfect society. Different ordinary religions are preaching morality. Do this, don't do that. So many rules and laws, and uh, nobody can follow them. Why? Because we still have the craving for material enjoyment within our hearts. The craving for enjoyment is natural to the soul. Everyone wants to enjoy why? Because we are a part and parcel of God, and God is the supreme enjoyer. So we all want to enjoy, but when we try to enjoy this material world, we create karma that binds us to the material world. And the more we try to enjoy, the more frustrated we become, because we're not this body. So we can't get the real enjoyment that we seek by enjoying this material world. It doesn't satisfy us. We need spiritual enjoyment, and that comes from God. So the closer we get to God, and the more God reveals himself to us, the more satisfied we become, until finally we don't need material enjoyment at all. Spiritual enjoyment is more than enough to satisfy us because it satisfies our soul. It satisfies our real self. Therefore, we don't have to go out through the senses. Jesus said, the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God is within us, then God is also within us. So to find God, we have to go within. To go within, we need to meditate. And the best form of meditation is to meditate on the sound of God's name. The sound of God's name must be vibrated with one's tongue. Therefore, to purify and control the tongue is the beginning of authentic spiritual life. This is the actual uh, launching pad into mysticism. People don't understand this. It's a great secret. That's why in every church, in every mosque, in every place of worship, in every temple, there are chants and prayers and hymns glorifying God or different aspects of God. This is spiritual sound vibration. And uh, as we go on in this series, we'll investigate the nature of spiritual sound vibration, understand how it works and so forth, and you'll be in a position to apply it to find your perfect body. We hope you've enjoyed this edition of My Perfect Body. This is David Hughes, your host, reminding you to visit us on the web at esotericteaching.org.